So blobs, they're all the same, aren't they? Let's have a look. Okay, many moons ago, well not that many, uh, maybe about six years ago now, uh, you'd hear statements that Fritz is Fritz, Blobs is Blobs. And for the most part that, that was a fair reflection on materials at the time. Fast forward six years and materials to make Blobs, I think it's fair to say, has, has moved on. And I just wanted to spend a little minute to have a look at some of the range from f and f and try and give you an idea of what blob to use, uh, how it works, material it's made of sort of thing and how it's going to benefit you in the water because it's fair to say different materials, different blobs will work better in some days than others so I'll try and give you a snapshot of that. I can make a feature film out of this, uh, it could take a while but I'll try and condense it and just give it uh, some sort of bullet points for you and I'm hoping the camera will be able to zoom in on these, these materials here. What I'd like to do is um, start at the the largest sort of blob that, that we know is out there and it would be a, a block 30. Now block 30 as the, the name would suggest is an opaque fibre and hopefully the, the camera can sort of zoom in and pick that up. But this is a 30mm long fibre so it's an, it creates a massive massive profile in the water. It can be good or it can be bad. When is it good? Well in the past we have found it exceptionally good to attract fish into the cast. Um, they don't always necessarily take the fly, it's sometimes just a bit too much for them if it's a full body block 30 blob but very often brings them surging into the cast and it's been ridiculous sometimes watching them come in and turn and take the nymphs behind likes of a block 30 blob so a great great attractor, pushes a lot of water, creates a lot of disturbance, bring the fish into the cast. It does work though uh, for, I'm talking mostly uh, stock rainbows, uh, if you tie only a few turns of material instead of doing a full body just try maybe two or three turns of one colour, two or three turns of another colour you get a really slim profile and uh, they are more prone to, to come in and, and grab hold of it then so that's block 30. Moving on, uh, the next sort of size but completely different, hopefully the camera again will pick that up, uh, is Daphne of Fritz. This is one of FFNF's first creations uh, way back in the day, six years ago now, and I can remember testing it and uh, what a difference it made on the water for us. The fish had seen all the other stuff that was out there, you throw something else into them, and fish that have ignored your blobs for a hundred casts so all of a sudden start taking something different for them. And um, we we developed this, this Daphne Fritz now. It's a 20 mil fibre, as you can see it's going to create a pretty bulky blob I and mean, when wet it goes completely translucent and looks like a blob of well the, the name originally was from Daphne a blob of Daphne in the water sort of thing this will go translucent again it's a great um, attractor pattern pulls fish in and uh, they, they happily take this only thing I'd say is if you're using this just watch it's quite a bulky material keep these hook points uh, so, so they don't they don't get masked by the, by the material, keep them nice and sharp, keep them below the material, Just trim it if you have to, but uh, Daphne and Fritz is, is well worth a, a go. Uh, and, and also that's great, sometimes strip through the surface of the water, they love coming in and chasing it. You get the big bow wave coming after it. Moving on swiftly, we'll go down to a Block Jelly. Now again, it's sound kind of like a big brother, Block 30. No, this is a 15 mil uh, version. As the name suggests, it's opaque in the water, but there is these jelly fibers through it, so you'll get a bit of translucency as well. When would I use uh, block jelly? I would tend to go for fresh fish with this. It really creates a large block color in the water that sticks out a mile. And for fresh fish, it's pretty irresistible. Uh, I've seen competitions, one on block jelly, uh, when they wouldn't touch other materials uh, and it's gen ten tends to be sort of bright colours people use it in but I've seen the sombre colours work really well as well you know if you use likes of biscuit colours it can be absolutely cracking so that's a uh, block jelly nice opaque 50ml pattern there uh, coming down again uh, 
uh, the the flagship. This is jelly, 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 fifty mil jelly, and this. I think it's fair to say has won numerous competitions. I'd, I'd like a, a pound for every fish that's caught in a blob uh, and and in jelly for that matter. Um, now, key to this is lots of thin mobile fibres, and each one of these fibres transmits light, uh, kind of like edge bright. Maybe see if I've got a bit here. I don't know. Um, it work, works in the same way as the camera pick that edge bright sort of material there like that absorbs the light lets it go down the the fiber and as you get this luminescent effect at the tip and jelly does that with the, with the dyes that's used on it and with the fiber type the small fiber makes lots of them more luminescence uh, this is just a great all-rounder um, if you had to default to one pattern to only use ever I'd tend to stick to jelly but again, it could be beat on days. I've seen block jelly working better than it. I've seen Daphne Fritz work better than it. Um, but this is a real stalwart and, and definitely worth having in every box. Bright colours. You can see, uh, you, I don't know if the camera again picks up, but you can see the luminescence of the fibre there. Coming down in size. No, no, it's not coming down in size. Uh, change of material, I should say. Uh, standard 15. You can see it's very similar to uh, jelly in size, but standard 15 is more an old style sort of fritz and it's going to give you a bulkier pattern. It has the jelly fibre in it, but also there's supporting fibres through this material, so it doesn't go quite as translucent. It gives more of a, a sort of block, thicker finish. Now, um, it works great in bright colours, but we tend to use it more in the sort of sombre colours, like the biscuits and things like that. Uh, so, so it cre just creates a, a thicker block of colour. And um, standard fifteen is a, a a sort of more conventional style of of frets. Worth mentioning this guy here. Uh, hopefully, the the sun's picking that up and it's, it's reflecting the light. This is um, two tone jelly. And it has actually opaque fibres through it, but it's also got these jelly fibres. And this one here is the, the Tequila Ghost. And when would I use this? Well, I would use this all the time, kind of like jelly. It's an absolute fantastic material, this two-tone. You get the, the, the different the contrasting tones right throughout the, the pattern. You mix two colours together and you're going to get four colours of material through the, through the pattern. This one here, uh, I found it to be a fantastic uh, alternative to the biscuit. It's very subtle, this one made from the um, UV Atomic and the UV Orange here. It's very, very subtle. And this particular one, it's got these UV fiber rinses through it and it just catches the light. So that's the, the two-tone jelly. Uh, worth, worth a mention uh, on that range is definitely worth Worth trying. You can see, I've got tons of it sitting out here. Is the the Jenkins double sunburst again? An absolute fantastic two tone. Moving on. This time we're coming down in size. Uh, we go down to jelly ten. So when would a fish a jelly ten, and not the conventional fifteen mil jelly? I would go more for um, pressured fish, and. It can make a big difference, stepping down in size. You, you'll you see pressured fish, you still are interested in blobs, they'll still fall them. But when they come into the boat, it's just sometimes too much for them. And they've seen a hundred of them, they shy away and, and off you go and you don't get a lock up. But if you go down in size, like say the Jelly 10, it can, you know, uh, spur them on to, to take it in at the side of the boat. They're just not as put off by it. So that's the sort of times I'd, I'd come down to a Jelly 10. Also use them in um, like cat bodies as well, like atomic yellow and cat bodies. It makes a lovely body for, for cats. I'm going to come right down in size this time and grab this little fella while we're... It'll give you some sort of context and size. So we'll block 30. This little guy here, I should also say, these are all tied in full and mill short shanks to give you a sort of representation of, of size. So this little guy is micro jelly. Uh, and like his big brothers, he's got these micro filaments uh, 
of jelly fibre and it transmits and transmits in fluorescence lights. But these wee guys, great for um, lure bodies, uh, again cat bodies and that sort of thing, but also fantastic on their own, like that's a little tequila there. Uh, chuck them out, leave them to swing around in the wind, and again, when they're all pressured and they've gone off the bigger stuff, these can be great fun. Uh, even just a cast of three of them, all different colours, chuck them out on a floating line and let the wind swing them round and the fish pick them up. Uh, black and green's really good, tequila's good, little sunburst ones, fantastic. Good fun to use uh, and it's something not many people do, but again, I've seen these doing really well in competitions, going down to this size. UV jelly. When do we use UV and when not to use UV? I think the jury's still out. I speak to lots of great anglers, lots of great competition anglers, and they have all got different opinions. Personally, um, I find that UV works best in sort of dull conditions, uh, just under the surface, and uh, I'll stick on a, a UV blob, and you can see them pinging in the water uh, sometimes. That, that exact pattern there um, was, the, was the one that won the angling water uh, a few years ago now with the change guys and they used this pearl gel, uh, this um, UV jelly to fantastic effect. Dull conditions, stick it on the tail, wash in line and see if they react to it. If they don't, if you don't start a, a, get a, a reasonable instant response to it then they're maybe just not interested in the UV at that particular time of day. Um, take it off and maybe go back to something, you know, a more conventional maybe blob. But maybe go back if the light changes, if the sun comes out or something, if there's changing conditions, maybe worth sticking it back on to see if they've gone on to, onto the UV. Almost there. Peril jelly. It's not used much. I don't know if the camera will pick up the little peril fibres in it. But, uh, these aren't used that much and they can be so great. I've started competitions on Peril Jelly before. Um, I can remember, it was a few years ago actually, um, it was actually one of John Horsey's matches, uh, team matches, and we went out with, with Peril Jelly blobs on. And this one is actually called Rhubarb and Custard uh, and it was working really well for us. And it did, it did, did well through the competition. I've also seen it um, on the Latham and Teeth untouchable. I can remember my boat partner Toby Bracey, uh, we were drifting down through the mall and the sun came out and he stuck on a pearl blob and it was the rhubarb and custard and he absolutely run amok. You could see it, you know, 30 yards in front of you, absolutely, yeah, you can cast 30 yards uh, before Dale says it, but um, it was it was glinting in the sun. And you can see it on the surface and the fish were just, you know, zoning into it. And we had boats, it was so hard that day. We had boats, actually, um, Campbell Morgan and Donald uh, Forbes was, was one of the boats that came over and said, what's going on? You know, what are you doing, guys? This is absolutely unbelievable. We're watching you. And it's Toby with a, a pearl jelly, jelly rhubarb and custard. And the fish were just homing in on it. So um, pearl jelly, tend to use it in the sun. Break, break, break conditions. It can be, can be really good. So there you go, hopefully that's given you a, a, an envelope of the different sort of types of materials, um, when to use them, maybe when not to use them, and um, if you've got any questions, let us know, we'll, we'll try and help you out as best we can, but we know it can be quite confusing, but hopefully that'll answer some queries that you might have, and um, good luck for the new season. Tight lines.